Welcome to the Future Tech Radio Show, featuring industry pioneers, technologists, and CEOs across various industries about how the future of technology will shake up the status quo across the globe. Here's your host, Matthew Lockrin. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another show of Future Tech. Again, I'm your host, Matthew Lockrin. Today, we have an entrepreneur on the show named Christian Zimmerman. Uh, Christian is the founder and CEO of Coins. Coins is a financial technology company helping people get out of debt faster and save some money. Christian, welcome to the show, man. Hey, Matt. Thank you for having me. Really excited to be here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, yeah, pleasure to have you on the show. Uh, look, very interested to jump into a couple of things uh, right directly about yourself and Coins. So can you maybe even share with us a little bit about your background and what inspired you to start Coins? Absolutely. So yeah, uh, you know, as you mentioned, Christian, I'm 26. Um, I, I started Coins right after graduating from college. So I went to Georgia State University here in downtown Atlanta, grew up in Atlanta my whole life, uh, was born in Houston, but like I said, just grew up in Atlanta. And so, uh, you know, graduated December 2015, so almost 2016. And you know, right after college, about six months, really had these student loans uh, just hit after the grace period. And then also just finding myself with some personal loans that I had taken out so that I could graduate uh, and really just kind of fell into this, this swamp of debt and, uh, you know, found myself not really understanding kind of how how I was you know managing my money and how poorly I was managing it, thinking I had, you know, this good paying job coming out of college and I just figured it out later. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, you know, as an entrepreneur, I was working at this other startup, wanted to do my own thing and found that other people kind of had the same problem. And so, you know, I tried to solve it for myself and then found that there was a need for some something in the bigger market, you know, to 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 be put out there. So that's what I did. Yeah, you probably just described, I'd say, the the journey for you know, tens of thousands of individuals graduating college every year right now. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, coming out, uh, right. Coming out with a, a boatload of student loans, right. Coming in, if they're lucky to get a job, they got a job. Uh, then all of a sudden, uh, six months later, those first payments start hitting. Right. Um, so I, I would definitely say you guys definitely have a market for what you're doing. Uh, can, take, can you tell me what really, what really motivates you to, to, to help these individuals? Yeah. So, um, so we again, like when I started, uh, a lot of it was very much just tailored towards student loans. And what motivated me was kind of like the personal pain point I had and just seeing a lot of my friends graduate with kind of the same instability. And then as I as over the last three years, as I've been working on coins, I've noticed kind of like a transition in not just automating your finances to kind of, you know, smooth things out, but really understanding like exactly where you are, you know, the fundamentals of personal finance. And, you know, some simple questions that you ask people that, you know, really they don't know. And so, uh, you know, my mom, my, my, my dad, you know, they, they've always been pretty good with their money, but they've kind of fallen like little hurdles themselves. And, you know, I've seen kind of the stresses that come with, with the debt burden. And, you know, it, it definitely can cause a lot of strife in, in relationships, in your own, in your own life. And so, um, there's a lot of things just that got a lot of baggage that come with it. And so, you know, that's really what I wanted to solve. Um, and so over the last few years, we've kind of like transitioned to focusing on how we kind of build those fundamentals up so that you can start making, uh, impacts on those goals that you're trying to achieve long-term. You mentioned that, uh, you ask people a couple different questions, uh, typically can, can you mention what some of those common questions are? So our audience can get a better understanding as well. Yeah, I mean, um, so like usually uh, it's it's more like, oh, you know, how much did you spend this month, right? And most people don't even know, you know, they can think off the top of their head kind of like their monthly, you know, regular expenses. But then you add in, you know, uh, eating out, going out to, to the bars or like, you know, shopping. A lot of those things add up and a lot of people forget to add those minute uh, expenses into the budget. Um, so that's a big one that we usually ask. Then also uh, asking like, how much income do you bring in on a monthly, weekly, bi-weekly, yearly basis? You know, some people will say like, what's on their employer card, right? Say, oh, I mean, I make 65,000 a year, but do you really after taxes, right? You know, how much is being taken out? Uh, how many dependents do you have? 
um, you know, what is what are you really going home with? And then understanding how much you're spending versus how much you're actually bringing in. And so that's those are like usually again very basic fundamentals around you know income, cash flow, inflows to outflows. But uh, you know, a lot of people just do not know that. So it sounds like you're also deploying a really a, a base level of pure financial literacy um, with your your financial technology. Uh, can you? How does that how does that technology work? Like, how is it uh, a web based platform? Is it a mobile application? Um, can you can you describe a little bit about that? Exactly. So yeah, so we're a mobile app. Um, we we how it works is you sign up, um, you get matched. Well, we ask you what what is financial goal is it you're trying to achieve? Is it you know paying off debt, which we, that's like our bread and butter and what we like to primarily focus on. But is it, are you also trying to save money? Are you trying to kind of build a better budget? Are you trying to hit specific goals around these bigger buckets? So we'll ask those questions. Then we'll actually match you with a financial certified financial coach. That coach will then kind of go more in depth into your finances. You, you would then link your accounts that you're trying to analyze. Um, and then on the back end, after you've met with your coach, you get in the automation piece, which helps you kind of start, you know, selecting your savings method, however you want to save. And then also your payment methods and how you want to make extra payments towards your loans. So really tying in the, the personal aspect with the coach um, and the accountability and then the automation, which is kind of the back end tool, not so much the front end robo advising. We would like to bring the two together. Interesting. Okay. So you really have that, that personal touch, the coaching aspect. And obviously, you know, coaches can be a very big part in no matter what you're doing to succeed. Uh, so it actually maybe transition that question a bit then to you from a uh, career perspective or an entrepreneur perspective. You know, do you have any any coaches yourself or mentors, um, you know, that you might have learned some lessons from that have helped you? Oh, yeah, I, I try to surround myself with as many uh, smarter, wiser individuals as I can. And I think I, I have mentors depending not depending, but I have mentors for specific things and for different parts of my life journey, my business journey, right? Um, so, you know, obviously you start off with my parents, but as I got into college career, I have, you know, one of my closest mentors that I'm still very close with, his name's Roger. He's actually, I think, kind of like what helped me elevate myself to wanting to do my own thing and helping me travel abroad, um, small start small businesses and then like learning kind of what it is I wanted to do long term and then now that I've started coins now surrounding myself with people that have been there have done that have exited and can help me kind of navigate kind of those waters because like, like we were talking before it's just things can go wrong really fast and things can go right really fast and that emotional roller coaster is sometimes just very daunting and you know some it's very lonely too so you got to figure out you know how do you get that feedback and and advice from people that you know maybe haven't gone through it, but which find people that you have, you know, those are those are the type of people you want to surround yourself around. And so I try to do that as much as I can, always learning. No, excellent. I think you know part of the journey, whether it be an entrepreneur, or technologist, or deploying technology into into the world, uh, it's all about that, that iteration, right? So that that rapid iteration, uh, customer feedback loops, and so forth. And obviously, when you look into scale businesses or you know enhance your footprint. It's not always sunshine and rainbows, right? So there's definitely challenges that definitely come up in there. Uh, so I'll maybe kind of pose this to you as well as, um, you know, currently at you know, the current stage of your company, what would you think is coming, some of your top challenges that you're facing right now? And, you know, how do you anticipate actually being able to overcome those? Um, yeah, so like most, like probably all entrepreneurs, we always argue, like, you know, top one is always, you know, capital, right? <laughs> right? Um, and so... Um, that's always a big one, but then the other one is, you know, just distribution. So how we go about scaling, um, or not so much scaling, but figuring out those pipelines that we want to target. Um, and then, you know, getting our foot in the door. Um, I would say those are like our biggest ones that we've tried to, that keep me up at night. And, and, you know, obviously I want to have a strong team and be able to build a big team, but then sometimes that requires, you know, capital, um, you know, commitment from, from your team. Uh, employees. So uh, those are things that keep me up at night. Uh, but again, the revenue aspect, you know, it's a push and pull. So do we have more capital or do we, you know, figure out ways to increase our revenues? And so we're doing a mix of both right now. And uh, like we've said before, it's just kind of like a waiting game sometimes and you kind of just keep pushing, making things happen uh, as those other things kind of come to fruition. 
And you mentioned distribution um, as a uh, obstacle, as really opportunity, I guess, for you as well, right? Because um, we have a lot of different types of individuals that, that do listen in to, to the show. What would be a good distribution partner for you um, in that respect? Is it like a financial institution? Is it a, uh, an organization that's in financial services but doesn't do you know, planning like this? Uh, can you maybe shed some light on that? Yeah, so we're looking at it in three three buckets. So um, from the employer standpoint, you know, if you're looking to offer like you know benefits to employees, you know, around financial coaching to help you know your employees kind of have a better lifestyle, so they aren't coming to work stressed or you know worrying about pay things like that um, or about their finances. That's one avenue that we're looking at and started talking to some employees about. Um, the other is you know you mentioned financial institutions or what I call like financial counselors. These are people that are solely focused on uh, this space, but um, usually have like a higher in amount of debt audience that they're looking for. And so usually, you know, they're talking to people that have tens of thousands of debts and can't won't necessarily work with someone that has, you know, 10K or less. But, you know, the average consumer has around, you know, maybe two to seven thousand dollars of consumer debt. So that's our sweet spot. And so we try to work kind of in tandem with them. Um, and then lastly, kind of just uh, other other personal finance blogs, websites, organizations that are focused around financial literacy. So uh, nonprofits, you know, we're looking we're always looking to work with companies like uh, Operation Hope or, um, you know, some of the some of the uh, uh, events and organizations that that banks are using around their CRA credits to offer and promote financial literacy. So those are our three big buckets that we're looking at right now. It's definitely a wide range of organizations that seems like could really benefit from you know a partnership with coins. You know, if I look at you know some of the larger employers, financial wellness is a very big topic, right? Especially um, as we just discussed earlier, right? A lot of people coming out of college having that student loan debt, not necessarily knowing the correct path to paying that off while you know, accumulating other debt as well, such as credit cards and so forth. That could, that, that could definitely be a, a great area for you as well. So kudos, keep, definitely keep keep heading down that path. Um, speaking about offerings, I would love to understand like, kind of from what your standpoint is, what really excites you the most about the coins offering? What excites me the most is, uh, is, is kind of the aspect of how we're tying in the two, uh, the technology with the human aspect uh, kind of built into it. That's, that's in a scalable fashion. And what I mean by that is, you know, you can go to your traditional financial coach and, you know, have someone and pay, you know, upwards of $100, $200. So price-wise might seem like it's expensive. You're only going to get one hour out of it. But you do get that human aspect, um, but not, you know, all the time, right? Whereas on the robo advising side, you get, you know, someone you can text, but at the same time, it's not very personal. You don't build that relationship. You also don't kind of get as much of that accountability, but it's just the technology. And so uh, when I look back and, and try to figure out how do we go about, you know, really creating a solution that people can, can one, understand, but also really make impact around the finances, this is what we came up with. Um, and, you know, we dog food our own product and, and have now, you know, have uh, over 12,000 customers currently using our product and uh, quite a few hundred just on the coaching itself. Um, you know, customers are coming back, asking questions, asking questions and becoming more vulnerable and, and just, you know, opening up to us about their situation. And so it's very humbling. It's very exciting. Um, it also puts a lot of things into perspective as to why and how people got into where they are and how they're trying to, you know, not ask for a handout, but more so just kind of like get that push to kind of achieve those goals. And so that's what keeps me going, gets me super excited. Love seeing the numbers too about how much debt we've been able to pay off, $10 million to date. Um, so things like that is just, you know, my mom's always says like, you know, if you're doing something, make sure you're, you know, you're making an impact, not just on yourself, but other people around you. And so that's, that's exactly what I, I try to focus on. And, you know, this is a very humbling experience and I love what we do. Wow, that's, that's super impressive. You know, you already paid off $10 million of debt for your customer base. Uh, and I, if I think about kind of the way you described, right, the, the, the interconnection between the technology and the human aspect, it's really that, that human machine loop, right? So knowing where each one picks up within that life cycle, 
uh, seems to be quite exciting as well. Obviously, not, not everything is always exciting. There's always, you know, when you're looking, especially <laughs> in the financial technology sector, right, there's always different threats, internal, external. Um, I always maybe want your perspective on maybe some of your company's biggest threats right now as well. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, some of the things that, that like you mentioned around the, uh, you know, data privacy, things like that. So you're seeing a lot of regulations starting to come into place going into 2020. Um, I wouldn't say they necessarily directly affect us, but I think it, at some point it can um, with like the California Privacy Act, things like that. Um, the biggest thing around our product is the fact that we, because we are, you know, uh, making payments on behalf of our consumers and facilitating funds, you know, making sure from the regulatory standpoint that we're doing and adhering everything uh, and becoming being as secure as possible for our customers so that they have that peace of mind. Um, those are things that, that I think about. And then, you know, other stresses obviously is, you know, just figuring out how we continue to grow and evolve uh, with the trends that are, that are coming, you know, because this space FinTech is just ever evolving and going so, so fast. Um, and you're starting to see banks kind of start to, to catch up and I figure out how they can kind of start working with one another uh, to make some of these changes and implement some of the changes with the government regulators. Yeah, no, definitely. You're looking into the fintech spe- uh, sector. It's always about compliance, 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 right? A lot of regulatory red tape. Um, you know, that comes out with the good and the bad, right? So the good aspect of that is there's, you know, good regulation to, to protect the consumer who you're also looking to help, right? The the bad aspect of that is it costs a lot of money to open up a fintech <laughs> company to go ahead and help individuals like you're going to help, right? Um, so there's definitely external threats uh, with that, no matter what sector you are in when you're talking in the financial technology space. Uh, absolutely. Uh, now kind of maybe transitioning outside of coins, um, you as an individual, kind of what what really keeps you going, right? Because you mentioned something earlier, which I want to maybe double click on a little bit, which is um, it can get tougher. It can get sometimes lonely, right? As an entrepreneur, right, running a company, um, when it gets tough, what, what's really driving you to push through that barrier? Um, for me, it's, uh, you know, I just I've, I've kind of built that tenacity of just like there is no failure. Like uh, you got to keep going. You find you find solutions to, to problems any way you can. Um, and for me, you know, I'm I'm a first generation in in the U.S. First one to go to college. Um, first one really for everything in, in my, in my family. So like, uh, you know, my mom, my mom never went to high school, uh, or like stopped right in high school. So, you know, she pushes me, uh, and has taken a lot more risks than I ever will, um, to put me in a position that I am today. So things like that, uh, is what's drive me kind of to my limits. And then on the, on the other side, like I personally, I've had, I've had open heart surgery two times. Um, we'll have a third by the time I'm 30. Um, and so, you know, things like that, when you go through things like that, you don't really f- think it's as impactful as, as you think it'll be, but, uh, you know, having been through it now, having grown up with it, um, as a child and kind of through my teenage and adulthood now, it, it's put a lot of things into perspective and, you know, it's, it, you know, the, it can be a lot worse. Um, so that's kind of how I think about life and how I think about, you know, what drives me and why I focus on this specific problem because, you know, money, money, money causes a lot of health issues. Money causes a lot of relationship issues. Um, you know, if people think that money will bring happiness and at the end of the day, it doesn't. Uh, but, you know, if we understand how to, how to work around, work with how our, understand how our money works and, you know, a lot of those things can be uh, mitigated. Um, and so, you know, kind of fun fact, when I, when I started coins, um, I, I literally just quit my job uh, to focus on working on coins and I had got sick. And at that point they told me, Christian, you're gonna have to have a third open heart surgery probably in the next two months. I just got off my health insurance. So I was like, oh my gosh, this is great. I don't, I'm not even gonna get to start this company. Um, fast forward, I beat it somehow. I guess the infection that I had, you know, went away or the medication they gave me was able to kind of uh, kill it or put it into dormancy. Uh, but again, like I'll have another one by the time I'm 30, but that, that, that type of, you know, stuff that I've been through kind of drives me and, you know, I think other people see that tenacity in me and I try to put that amount of effort and perspective into anything that I do now. 
Uh, and I commend you, man. That's um, you know the, the personal journey yourself, right? Overcoming those those obstacles from a from a health perspective, and kind of using it as a driving force, and then having that that family support, right? As well as the expectation almost for you know we need you to push through and succeed. That's definitely, I'm sure, a motivating driver, and you know, that you're waking up every day and kind of moving forward and moving this company forward with. So, you know, that was, that was quite insightful. I really, I really appreciate that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so maybe telling it back to a, a little quirky question I typically ask almost every person that comes on the show, uh, being a technology show, right, is um, what gadget or maybe gadgets, if you will, that you might be totally addicted to? that you really can't live without. I'm really curious. And do you, you understand the wide variety of answers I've had in the show. So <laughs> <laughs> gadgets, huh? Um, so I'm actually like really, I'm a really big pen person. Like I love fountain pens. Um, I don't know why I, I got into it when I was younger. I used to be, I used to love drawing and then I got into calligraphy and now like at any time I have my pen with me and, this pen, it's not a Mont Blanc. I kind of feel like the Mont Blanc pens are like very like uh, somewhat superficial, but I, I did spend a lot on this pen, particular pen. It's a Parker pen and I love it. It's a fountain pen. You have to like put cartridges in it and change them out every few months. Um, but yeah, I, I think like that's somewhere I go everywhere with. Like I have it with me almost as a symbolization too of like of my business when I, I bought it when I first started. Um, and I was like, this is when I'm going to sign checks with, this is kind of like when I sign deals with, <laughs> um, but I just love that pen. Uh, so I would say that's, that's the one that I could probably can't live without. <laughs> I love it, man. It's, it's nostalgic, right? It's, uh, it's real. All right. I, I love the other. I really appreciate it. Um, uh, yeah. well, Christian, um, again, we're, we're, we're kind of wrapping up here. I just want to say, again, thank you for coming on the show today, sharing a little bit about your journey sharing a little bit about coins. Uh, and then also, you know, you mentioned a couple of things, right? Uh, capital distribution partners, customers, et cetera. Um, what's the best way for listeners to learn more about coins? Yes, yeah, so you can, you can check out our website at www.coins, coins with a Q is what I always say, uh, dot IO. Uh, or you can, you know, uh, shoot me a personal email or uh, at Christian at coins .io. Very simple. Um, I'm also like very, very, uh, approachable and like, uh, able, able to kind of get in contact with through LinkedIn. LinkedIn is kind of my favorite platform to, to get in contact with people. So I would say those three. Awesome. Well, again, I appreciate you coming on the show. Uh, and everybody, thank you again for listening in to another episode of future tech. Again, your host, Matthew Lockerin and until next time. Thank you, man. Really appreciate it. Thanks for tuning in to the Future Tech Radio Show with Matthew Lockrun. Please subscribe, share, like, and comment. Tune in next time.